Okay, it's been a while since I did my foundry build, but I still have one part remaining, which is to make the lid. So in today's video, I'll be creating the lid and doing a test run of the foundry. So to make the lid, as you can see, I just put in two and a half quarts of plaster of Paris. And I'll be putting in just under two and a half quarts of sand. And once you have those measured out, add them to your bucket and then mix them together. And then the next step is to add the water. So what I've been doing is putting in just enough water so that I can still pour my mix. However, it's not so runny that it's going to take a long time to cure. And that's kind of what I like working with. And I also added some steel wool into the pan so that it won't crack over time. And unfortunately, I would not do what I'm doing now, which I realized later, is it's better to put down a layer of your mix first, then add the steel wool, then add the rest of your refractory mix or else the steel wool just kind of gets pushed to the bottom. And when you pull it out, you'll see a lot of it remaining at the bottom and kind of sticking out, which I realized later and you'll see in just a bit. As you can see, I placed a can in the center, which will serve as my vent hole. And then I also have two U-bolts, which are gonna go side by side to serve as my handles. So it's a little bit easier to remove from the foundry while it's in use. So to fuel the foundry, I'm using charcoal briquettes, and it's pretty easy. You just surround the crucible with the briquettes, and then to get it started, what I ended up doing was just putting in a little bit of lighter fluid, um, kind of in increments, which is not a good idea because it takes forever to get started. What I recommend is just dowsing it all a couple times, go around in a circle a couple times, and then light it, but just be careful, and that will get it started nice and quick, and you won't have to waste any time trying to get it going. I found it best just to keep the hair dryer on the low setting. That seemed to work out well for me. Sometimes when I put it on the high setting, a lot of sparks flew up in the air. And that partially might be due to the fact that I did try adding in a couple pieces of lump charcoal, which burns much hotter and does emit sparks. So you could try experimenting with lump charcoal. In this video, I'm pretty much only using just regular charcoal though. So keep that in mind.
one last thing to note is that for this video, it was more just a test to see if I could actually melt down my aluminum, and it wasn't really an attempt at casting anything, so I just kind of hastily made some sort of block shape, which you'll see at the end.